Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about using ChatGPT in Clay. When should you use it? What's the difference between GPT-3 and ChatGPT? And how do you use it in your table? So I like to tell people that when you're using artificial intelligence in your tables, the OpenAI GPT-3 feature was awesome for taking that data and you could feed it a lot of data and then it could create text uh, you know, from the data that you gave it. What's so great about ChatGPT, and here's the main difference, is you can feed a lot more context to ChatGPT than you can just the regular GPT-3 prompt. So now when you're writing your emails, when you're trying to normalize data, when you're trying to write first lines, you can give it a lot more context of this is exactly the way that I like things to be. And then when you get finally to your output, it's going to be more likely giving a chance of writing an email or a text or whatever you want it to generate with exactly the way that you like it to be because you gave it that context beforehand. And not to mention, it's also cheaper than GPT-3. So it's a win-win completely all around. So when you want to give a lot more context to what you're building in your artificial intelligent prompts, that's how you do it. Now, the way you set this up in Clay is very simple. You just click on Enrich Data. Then you could click on AI GPT-3, or you could click on Providers. That's going to bring you to our OpenAI integration. We're going to click on Converse with ChatGPT, and now you'll see our input prompts. The first thing you'll have to make a decision on is how many messages do you want to send back and forth. Think about when you're using the regular ChatGPT interface. Uh, you jump in, and you give it some text, and it gives you an output. You give it some text, it gives you an output based on the conversation from before, right? And so... What you can do here is you could say, hey, I want to train the model with two messages and then I want an output. Or I want to train the model with five messages and then I want an output. Whatever it might be. So you always will just select your messages and I'll give you a couple examples of how to do that. So here, let's just say we want five messages. We'll hit enter and then we see all of our messages appear that we could possibly be using. Now, you have to give a role for each of the messages. So if you say system, this is the context that you're giving for the AI. So you could say, system, you are a translator for, that specializes in translating English into German. And then you're giving it the context of the role that it's supposed to play. You could also tell it that it is a WWE wrestler who is about to go into space, and that is the role that it's going to play. More power to you. User, think about when you're interacting with ChatGPT. The user is precisely when you're typing in things into ChatGPT and you're giving it the, the input. That's who you are. That's what this input is over here. That's what user is. For assistant, think about assistant as whatever ChatGPT's output is, that's the assistant output. So if you want to train it, so when it sees a certain input, it gives a certain output, you train it with this assistant button right here. And I'm going to give you a real live example. If you were to use GPT-3 to normalize people's uh, job titles, because people write wonky job titles all the time. It wouldn't really work that well. Um, sometimes it would work, but you don't have a high degree of integrity for those job titles. So now, if we give GP, uh, ChatGPT the context, it works way better. And so here's exactly how we set it up. First, I made the role for message one, the system. You are an assistant that is helping me simplify what people say their job titles are on LinkedIn. Message number two and its role. Now, this is a user. This is what I would input into ChatGPT if I was using the regular interface. Simplify a person's job title if they say their job title is CEO or hiring. The assistant. Now, I'm telling ChatGPT this is exactly how I want you to respond if you see an input like that. CEO. Again, I'm giving it another use case. Simplify someone's job title if they say they are COO, comma, co-founder. And now I'm telling it, if you see that, I want COO. Simplify someone's job title if they are director, comma, engineering. I want that to be turned into director of engineering. And then we could keep going, and I keep giving it some prompts. We keep going. And then finally, when I'm ready for my result to be generated of the thing I actually want, I say simplify someone's title if they say they are, and then I give it the input from the clay table. And this title is coming from the clay table right here which is coming from their LinkedIn profile over here. And so we have these titles and I say, what is this title? It is going to respond. The assistant is going to respond with its output. So we'll hit save changes. And then I've already hit play on all of these, but see what it did. CEO comma founder, CEO. It did not do CEO of founder, which would have been a common mistake before. 
president slash founder, founder, excellent, chief executive officer, CEO, president and chief operating officer, president, COO, comma, co-founder, COO. And notice how I put CEO world changer, we get CEO, VP of enablement, global sales department, VP of enablement, sales. I need to train it a little bit more, but you see what we're getting at here. Even if I were to put in, um, let's do VP of sales, we're hiring YC W 2022. Boom. And you put that in. Still just gives you VP of sales. So this is awesome because I gave it its context and it gave me the result. You can also use this for things that in the past I would use GPT-3 to do, but now I'm using chat GPT to do it again, because now it's cheaper to do it this way. In this one, what we're doing is I want it to play the role of you're an assistant helping me write the first line of a cold email. And then this is what I want to input. Using the input, write a first line to a casual cold email to a potential customer. The input is this, and then I give it the company description from their LinkedIn profile. Keep the output short and under eight words. Use specific words from the input. Start every output with my prefix. So I was doing some research on your company, and it looks like you help blank. We hit save changes, and then boom, we get into it. We can read a couple of these. They're always excellent. Um, I was doing some research on your company. It looks like you help capture patient insights, unique patient confidence by medicine. We capture, curate, and structure the unstructured insights. Excellent. It looks like you help stop breaches. Uh, reviews every alert is generated by known good behavior. Oh, wait, we stop breaches. Resolve every alert, stop breaches. Awesome. Uh, what do they do? Is leading a charge for a new wave of knowledge-driven, risk-centric cybersecurity solutions. It looks like you help manage cybersecurity risks. Awesome. I did notice that this one was a little off. Um, I was doing some research on your company. It looks like you'd love Checkly. So we just need to turn our prompt uh, to stop it from doing anything like this. This is probably just because the input is so short for Checkly that that's why we got that. Um, and let's see, it looks like you help students and they do help students. So anyway, this is functionally how you use ChatGPT within Clay. In the coming weeks, we're going to be releasing a lot more content around the workflows and the other crazy things that you could do with it, but have some fun with it. Let me know how you're using it and don't forget to reach out on LinkedIn or in our Slack community. Thanks for watching.